In this episode, we are going to be talking about the water systems in an Airstream. Come on inside. So currently, we are not connected to anything. The Airstream is just parked on the side of the street. When I turn the faucet on, nothing happens. I'm going to explain why. So right now our airstream is completely empty. There's no water in it anywhere. And we need to get water into it so the sinks and shower and toilet will all work. So I've got two options. One is to connect a hose to it. Option two is to fill a tank. In this analogy, we will consider a bucket of water and a hose of water. Pretend you had to take a shower. What are the pros and cons of taking a shower from a bucket versus a hose? A bucket's easy to carry with you. You can take that bucket of water, put a lid on it, and take it wherever you want and use the water wherever you are. A hose, you're tied to the hose. It has to be connected to a spigot. So I can't go on a hike and take this with me, obviously. But then there's also other pros and cons. With a hose, I can take a shower as long as I want, and with a bucket, I've only got five gallons. Well, the same thing applies to an Airstream or other RVs. We have holding tanks that have a limited capacity but are portable. And then we have city connections that are unlimited but are tied to a spigot. Let's focus on option one, connecting a hose. In order to get water into our Airstream, we need a hose. And this is a special hose found at an RV store. It doesn't have any rubber in it. You do not want to use a common garden hose because they're rubber lined and the rubber will actually transfer into your trailer and gum up the line. So make sure you always use a water hose from an RV store. So I'm going to bring it over here, connect it to my spigot. And this is just a regular garden spigot. Now you'll have these at a campground. That is when you would use this setup where you run the hose directly in. When you go stay at a campground at an RV park, screw it on, connect it, and you got water. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second. So now our hose connects to the Airstream here, and the water goes right in. Now, if you think about it, when I turn on the faucet, it's going to have pressure, just like a garden hose. You have pressure when you water your plants. You just open the key, and water comes out. There's no need for a water pump. Same thing here. When I open that, this line will be pressurized and everything inside will be pressurized. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, we'll turn the water on. There you can hear the pressure. Let's see what that looks like inside. Now that we've got pressurized water running to the trailer, water works everywhere. Got water in the kitchen sink. I've got water in the bathroom sink with lots of pressure and a little bit of foam. I have water in the toilet. Here's how the toilets work. They're kind of like submarines. When you lift up on this, it fills the toilet with water. And when you push down, it empties it and swirls it around. We also have an extra sprayer here that works as well. And then in here, I've got water in the shower as well. I'm just showing you this so you can see how it works. So now we have an unlimited supply of water. With that hose connected, we have full pressure. It's just like being in a house. Now we call that being connected to the city water. So the Airstream has pressure all the time. There are some pros and cons to this. Big pro, you have unlimited water. You can take as long of a shower as you want. You never have to worry about your tanks running out. Another big pro is it's quiet. We don't have a water pump pumping. It's just nice and quiet. It's just like a house. Okay, maybe not quiet when the air comes out, but now it's quiet. But yeah, it's just very simple and it feels like being in a house. Another pro is that you have more water pressure typically than when you run the water pump. So when you're taking a shower, it comes out with more pressure out of the shower head. Now there are also some disadvantages to running this setup. When you run directly from the city pressure, you have to accept whatever pressure is coming out of that hose. And at some RV parks, it's not regulated and you can have 80, 90, 100 PSI. Now fortunately, Airstreams have built-in pressure regulators. 
but not all RVs do. And that means if there's too much pressure, your pipes underneath here could burst and send water flying everywhere. So that's definitely something to consider. And for that reason, a lot of people get a water pressure regulator in between their hose and their city water connection. Another disadvantage is, you know, all this water has to go somewhere. And we're going to have another episode on waste tanks and what's happening. But this water goes somewhere and it's filling up tanks. So while it is an unlimited water supply, you got to be thinking, I am filling a tank and I can't take a two-hour shower or I'll fill up my tank. So that's something to keep in mind too. Another disadvantage is in freezing conditions, the water coming from the spigot through the hose can freeze and then you run out of water supply. So even though these are four season trailers, anything outside of the trailer, like the hose going from your spigot, is susceptible to freezing. So if that freezes, you could wake up in the morning, go to brush your teeth, and have no water. So that's something to consider. And finally, it only works when you're at a park. So if I'm camping in the middle of the mountains, far away from an RV park, boondocking where I just drove down some dirt road and set up camp, I can't use this setup because I don't have a water supply nearby. So that's the pros and cons of being connected to city water. Now we're going to disconnect the city water connection and show you the other way to have water in your trailer. All right, now let's pretend we're going camping up in the mountains and we're going to like a national forest place where they don't have hookups, they don't have a water spigot where we can just plug into city water. To do that, we're gonna have to take water with us. So before we leave, we're gonna fill up our fresh water tank with water. This is super simple. We turn our faucet on and we fill up our tank. So here we are filling our fresh water tank. That goes into a hose that goes down to a tank, and we keep filling it until we start to see water escaping right here at the overflow valve. That's how we know it's full. All right, with our tank full, we're gonna close this, and we're gonna lock this. But you don't want anyone poisoning it or tampering it or putting something else in there. That's why these have a lock on them. Let me show you how that translates inside. Now that our water tank is full, we're gonna go to turn on our sink and nothing's happening. Our tank is full, but we need to get the water up to all the faucets, and our tank has no pressure in it. We need to pressurize it. So what we're gonna do over here is turn on the water pump. I'll show you what that does in a sec. Okay, when it stops, that means it's created pressure. So we have a tank and the water pump sucking it out of the tank and pressurizing the line. So watch what happens when I turn this on now. Now we have pressure and the water pump has to kick on to keep supplementing pressure. So when you're camping out in the middle of nowhere and you're taking a shower, that water pump's gonna be running the whole time and you're gonna hear that. Anytime you use the sink or the toilet or any of that, the water pump is gonna kick on. And you can see the pressure's not quite as strong as when you're connected to the city connection, but it's still enough to get the job done. Let me show you what's going on. Inside this panel, we have a lot of stuff going on, but right there is our water pump. So watch, we'll hear it really loud now. See it kick on there? And it's creating pressure and putting the water out. Now let's talk pros and cons on using your fresh water tank. So number one pro is you don't have to be tied to a hose. You can go anywhere and you have water with you. That is a huge plus. Number two, it won't freeze. Because Airstreams are four season trailers, their heaters go to these tanks. And so the fresh water holding tank is heated. So when you're sleeping in here, even if it's zero degrees outside, everything else is frozen around you, the heater's gonna keep supplying hot air to keep that from freezing. That means when you wake up in the morning and go to take a shower, it's not going to be frozen. You're going to have instant water. You're going to be able to brush your teeth, all of that. That is a huge plus. Another huge benefit is that it's refillable. So if you do happen to drain all that tank on the dishes or a shower or whatever, you don't have to haul your Airstream down and get it refilled. You could do that, but what we often do is buy extra five-gallon buckets or something and fill them up with water and bring them to camp and transfer it back in to that tank with a little pump. So that's cool. You could potentially indefinitely stay out there if you just kept bringing water to your trailer. Another big pro to this is it makes you more water conscious. You can't 
you're going to run your tanks out if you just use it like a house. And so you're going to start thinking more about how much water you use. And that's good for the environment. If you do need to drain the freshwater tank, it's easy to drain and you can drain it anywhere. Often you'll see RVs driving down the freeway dripping some water and they're draining their fresh tanks because they no longer need that water and they don't want to carry the weight. Now some of the disadvantages to running off your freshwater tank is you have a limited capacity. You only have as many gallons as your freshwater tank has. So once it's used up, you're out of water until you fill it back up. Another disadvantage is it's got to run that water pump. That takes a little bit of electricity, not a lot, but it does drain your batteries a little. But the bigger issue is usually the sound it makes, the noise, and it's not quite as high a pressure as when you're running off the city. Another disadvantage is you're carrying the weight of that water with you everywhere you go. Not a huge deal, and these airstreams are meant for it, but it will reduce your fuel economy in your tow vehicle if you're carrying around an extra 300 pounds of water. So water weighs 8 pounds for every gallon. So in a 40 gallon tank like this, that's 320 pounds of water, of extra weight you're carrying around. Now if you need that water, it's totally worth it. But if you're going to a campground that already has water, don't haul water for the sake of hauling water. Another disadvantage is if you've been using part of your fresh water tank and it's half full, when you go to tow it, it's going to slosh. And that weight, that's you know 150 to 200 pounds shifting from left to right. And you will feel that. It'll wag the trailer when you go. So that's when I would recommend draining your freshwater tank when you're hauling with a half full tank. Fortunately, RVs come with water heaters so you don't have to take cold showers all the time. Same with washing the dishes or washing your hands or anything that uses water. You can choose to use hot water if you wish. This is the water heater. Whether you're using the water pump or the city inlet, all your hot water comes through here. There's really not much to adjust here. These have some electrical wires for the auto start. You got some drain valves and you've got a propane line coming in to provide the fuel to heat it. And then right here you have an air fuel mixture. This is pretty cool. You can loosen this little screw here and slide that back and forth. If you go way up in elevation where the air is thinner, you can add a little more air in there so it burns a little cleaner. I'm going to go turn it on so you can hear what the water heater sounds like. Check this out. Propane is firing at a six gallon water tank. It's full of water and the propane heats that up. And when it's hot, it will turn itself off and then we will have hot water just like in a house. So that's pretty cool that we don't have to worry about taking super cold showers all the time. Now this water heater works whether you're connected to city water or you're going off your holding tanks. A little bit warm coming out of there. All RVs have water heaters. Now, even though that's a six gallon capacity water heater, you don't take a shower with the pure boiling water. Like at home, you don't turn the heat all the way to pure hot. So that six gallons mixes with the rest of your water and that actually equates to like 15, 20 gallons of a hot shower. So right now, the all the rage are these tankless water heaters that have no tank that just cook it instantly. And while those are cool, they're really not needed in our opinion. Would I like one? Sure, but I'm not going to pay the money to pull my perfectly good working six gallon water heater out and put a tankless system in because this works so well and it's really quite efficient. Anyway, so even though there's six gallons of hot water, you can take a much longer than six gallon shower since it mixes with the cold water. So a couple caveats to the water system. I wouldn't recommend drinking the water straight out of the tap because it's coming out of a holding tank that's been sitting there. If it's the city water connection and you know it's potable, then that's a good chance. The only potential contamination is if there was water sitting in your lines. But we always filter the water coming out of the fresh water tank just because we don't know if some mold was accumulating in there. But I've heard there are chemicals you can go in and clean and sanitize your tank so you can drink it. But we're always extra cautious with our drinking water. So that is how the water system works. If you learned something from this video and you benefited and it will save you money down the road, consider supporting us on Patreon.com. For three bucks a month, you can make a big impact to us to help us be able to keep making more videos like this.